G'day guys, welcome back to Supercoach with DR. For today's video, we're going to take a look at the number one ranked team in Supercoach after the first round of the season, and that goes to Crazy Frogs. I think the coach's name is Adrian, so on the off chance, I highly doubt it. Adrian, if you are watching the video, mate, congratulations on an absolute ripper of a start. Would be absolutely stoked, mate, and I think you've made some really good decisions here. So, thumbs up. Awesome job, buddy. But, uh, yeah, look, we're going to take a look at Adrian's side. I'm not going to go into great depth. You know, we'll try to keep it to five to ten minutes max, I think. But uh, what we'll do is we'll look at how he structured his side up, look at some of the ticks, some of the question marks possibly about this side. And to be quite honest, I don't think there are a heap of those at the moment. Uh, we'll compare my structure with Adrian's structure as well, see how we go there. But I must admit, I'm a little bit jealous looking at this side, but you will also notice that there are many common players that we share. I think that there's 21 players that we've both selected and nine differences, and we will go through those in a minute as well. So let's take a look here at some of the key points. Before I get on to that, you'll notice that I've put some ticks on some players here. So the first one is Jordan Ridley. I think he's been selected in about 12% of sides. For memory, the fourth highest scoring defender for the round. I think that's terrific. What I was worried about with Ridley was his end to last year. Probably the last six to seven weeks, he went above 100, you know, around that 70 score, above 100, around 70 again for about two months there, I think. So that put me off Ridley as a starting pick, uh, more of an upgrade target, I thought, for mine. But look, it is only one round, but he is looking really good, and I think that's probably a good decision on Adrian's behalf to select Ridley there. I've given Oliver a tick as well. Look, a pretty decent score there compared to people like your Zeretz, uh, your Lockie Neals. And that's why I gave McRae a tick as well, because I know that many people were almost tossing and turning between McRae and Lockie Neal as well. And if you've selected Jack McRae over Lockie Neal, I think that's been a pretty good decision. Look, it's only one round again, as I said, and I've still got a bit of faith in Neal, but McRae just looks like the more solid pick. You're saving, what, 70K on him as well, so... Yeah, I think Jack McRae is a tick, given the fact that lots of people did select him over Neil, and even some like a Jack Steele as well after round one. Uh, Taranto I've also given a tick as well, because 170, you can see he's gone better than Laird and Merritt there, for example. So at that price, 107, I think you're looking pretty good, to be quite honest. James Jordan, a tick on field there with 78 points. Golden, certainly a big tick on field with 139. Then we go into the forward line, had the VC on Dusty absolutely spectacular so locked that 158 captaincy score in and then used his loophole really effectively brought tracy on the field and oh no he didn't sorry originally i thought that he'd put the emergency on james rose so imagine if he had have done that somehow uh, that would have been massive but look, on, on reflection i don't think he could have done that anyway but uh yeah what a terrific uh score from adrian the crazy frogs this round must be stoked with his team, as I said before. So some key points from this side. The first one is that there are five premium defenders, six if you include Rory Laird. So he can swing Laird for Clark, get him into the back line if needed. So really starting with six premium defenders, and they've all scored above 100, haven't they? Apart from the Seagull, Jake Lloyd, who I've also got a little bit disappointing, but wouldn't be overly concerned at this stage. The other big point, about this team is that he's got Matthew Flynn on field. The rookie ruck on field did not go with the set and forget, and it's paid off really well after round one. So 140 points on field instead of Brody Grundy with his terrible score of a 70. Well done, Crazy Frog. That's super, mate. No high price rookies uh, or low end mid prices apart from Campbell and Jordan Clark there in the back line. So no Impy, no Dow, no Danaher. I think that's looked really, really good so far and probably a good decision. Also skipped some of the high ownership players that did underperform. So Danger, Neil, Cripps, Real unfortunately got injured. So we can't say that really underperformed, but certainly got injured. And that's a real bonus. You know, if you're not selecting these high ownership players that have scored pretty poorly and you've jumped on some other blokes that have scored a lot better than them, Huge thumb up. That's a really big leg up on the rest of the competition. And I did say golden. Oh, remember, golden, golden. Uh, I'm going to call him Errol. Sorry, I said that in the last video. Errol on field. And I did have Row on field. Sorry, again, that was just a mistake. I'm not going to worry about going back and editing this. We'll just keep on going through, I think. So let's now take a look at the structure. So the way I've structured this, you'll notice there's four things there. Is 500K plus, 300 to 500K, 200 to 300K and less than 200k so there's always a bit of discussion about what is a mid price or is it 
above 200 is it above 250k so I've, I've just split split a little bit differently i suppose so there's a structure up there so you can see the crazy frogs has gone 5012 in defense mids 4106 rucks 102 so a big big move there not starting grundy in the forwards 2105 and if you compare that to me i've only got the four premium defenders down back still four in the mids I've gone with two in the ruck, so I've got my extra there. And then the frog has an extra one in the forwards as well. And let's compare the different plays that we've selected. So in the back line, Ridley over Butts, obviously a big one. McRae over Neil, spoke about that before. Dusty over Danger, that's been a super, super selection. A massive leg up doing that. Uh, Taranto versus Phillips. Taranto obviously scored pretty well. Phillips being 50k cheaper though. And then this is the other big difference. Now... I really did focus personally on job security for these rookies. I've been really worried about the rookies, in particular job security, those young Victorian guys as well. So if you compare this list of three here, you've got Sharp versus Impey. Now, as a line supporter, I can't see Sharpie getting an extended run of games because he needs to focus on his education. No Fagan's big on that. I have mentioned that in a previous video. So there, what going Sharp, you're saving almost 100K. And then Dow, I've gone over Fullerton. Again, job security, I don't think is great. He didn't really perform well over the weekend. And as soon as Dan McStay is right to return, I think that he comes in for Fullerton because I think McStay is actually pretty important to our structure and a bit of an underrated player at Brisbane, I think. And then we've gone McNeil over the other side there. Again, I was worried about his job security. 102K though, it's hard to go wrong if he plays a few games in a row, but... I'm not too sure about his job security at this stage. And I've gone with Berry over him. I think with Crouch out, Berry's job security is pretty good in the short term. And then I've compared sort of Daniel and Grundy there. So gone the extra one in defense as compared to me going with the set and forget in the ruck. So that's worked out um, for Adrian. 37 points better off by doing that. And probably what is it, about 100K better off as well with that decision. And then you've got Tracy and Fife who are the loopholes there as well. So yeah, look, if we're comparing both of our sides, certainly the structure is a little bit different. What I like about what the Crazy Frog has done here is the fact that he hasn't stuffed around with some of those high price rookies. I suppose you'd say like your impies and your dows like I've got. But I like that after round one. Look, if Sharp, Fullerton, McNeil get dropped before the price rate uh, rises. Sorry, I'm not sure if McStay is you know, right by then. I'm not sure if the other two will keep their spots. Then that could be... A little bit of a concern, I think. With Impy and Dow, at least I, well, I'm pretty sure anyway, that they'll play every week in their best 22. So that's a difference there, obviously a big one. And obviously the Rucks, as I mentioned before, is huge as well. Now that's worked out for one week, but I did mention in my other video that I did start with Sammy Naismith and was absolutely wrapped after round one. Different story. Uh, coming into the second round. So, uh, look, I suppose I'll leave it there, guys. I won't go into too much detail. As I said, I want to keep this one pretty short. But, uh, look, congratulations, Adrian. You've done a terrific job here, mate. Uh, as I said, I'm a little bit jealous. But, look, let me know what your structure is, guys, how you compare to Adrian's side. Because at the end of the day, uh, you know, I highly considered McRae, Dusty, Taranto, not so much, but certainly thought about him. Daniel, I would have loved to start with, was in my last team review video uh, before I posted my final one just before round one. So, yeah, in a way, I've had a look at most of the players that Adrian started with there, but, yeah, just made some different decisions, you know, um, going those uber premiums, I suppose, with that danger in the forward line, Neil, um, and then Grundy in the rucks, obviously. So, uh, yeah, take care, guys. I will leave it there. Uh, congratulations again, Adrian. And uh, let me know what your structure's looking like down there in the comments below, guys. Uh, look, I wouldn't recommend to trade this week unless you've got Dangerfield or Real. You have to do that. I would just give it another week if you're not forced into any trades this week because who knows what happens in round two. Maxi Gorn could give us a 180 and then Flynn might go down to a 65-70. We're just not sure about it. So there is some room to be made up here. It's going to be tough for me personally to make up that ground on the crazy frogs, but I'm not losing hope yet. Take care, guys. See you in the next one. Bye.